What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Bears Profit Plays YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the content in this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel below. Also, be sure to stick around to the end of this video for a quick message from our team. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, let's look at some NBA picks for Tuesday, March 14th slate of games. Let's take a look at that leaderboard before we get into tonight's picks. Trey, start us off. Yes, I. we all are a whopping zero for zero right now because all of our games are still going. But I did give out a fire pick, the Celtics minus 12 and a half against the Rockets. The Rockets have been dog poo poo. And even in their losses, they've been going and even in their losses, they've been getting blown out by double digits. I don't expect that to change tonight against the Celtics. Yeah, I have the Sacramento Kings tonight money line against the Bucks. Uh, the game has not started yet. We're going to hop off here and watch that game. Hopefully they cash for us. But let's move on to our picks for tonight. Trey, start us off. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be attacking the Brooklyn Nets versus OKC Thunder game. This line just does not make very much sense to me because if we look at this Nets team, I've been really impressed with how quickly this team has came together. The whole roster was basically reconstructed after trading away KD and Kyrie, especially their whole starting lineup. It's completely different outside of Clax Daddy. And I think they are in the running for the longest and most lengthy team in NBA history. Their starting lineup is absolutely deadly. Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Mikkel Bridges, Cam Johnson, Nicholas Claxton. Not a lot of shooting, but a hell of a lot of defense. But Mikkel Bridges has shown that he can step up and be a really good number one scorer. But they do have some three knockdown shooters coming off their bench. Royce O'Neal, Seth Curry, and Joe Harris. So this team is really scary. And so this team is really scary, in my opinion. And they have shown it on the court. They have a 5-1 and one record over their last six games. And they've covered every single one of those games, 6-0 and oh, ATS in those six games. Meanwhile, I feel like this Thunder team cannot decide whether or not they're trying to tank or if they're trying to get that last 10 spot. Since the All-Star break, we have seen some really, we have seen some really weird sits with SGA and Jalen Williams being ruled out. Basically, any game that they so choose. But Jalen Williams is projected to play in this game, and SGA did not play in the Thunder's last game yesterday, but, and he is questionable for this game with an abdominal injury. But the Thunder have been playing a very soft schedule here recently, but they have been winning those games 5-1 and one over their last six games, 5-1 and one ATS as well. So both teams are coming into this game with a lot of momentum, and whenever you look at the season matchups between these two teams, they've only played once, and it was in Brooklyn, and OKC didn't win. And OKC did win that game 112 to 102, but KD did not play in that game. And this is a whole new Nets roster. So give me the Nets here plus one and a half. I would take it up to minus one and a half because I do think this game could be rather close depending on which Thunder team shows up. But I do believe that this Nets team and their length is going to affect SGA's ability to get the shots off if he does play. And if, if, and if SGA does not play in this game, one and a half plus one and a half is just far far too low and very disrespectful to what this Nets team has done here are my favorite trends for this game the Nets are 6-0 and ATS in their last six games overall the Nets are 5-0 and ATS in their last five games played on one day's rest the Nets are 5-0 and ATS in their last five road games and the Thunder are 2-6-1 and ATS in their last eight games versus a team with a winning record and in this matchup the Nets are 7-2 and ATS in their last nine games in OKC my gut said Nets, and the trends backed it up. Give us Nets plus one and a half. Yeah, I like it, Trey. For my play tonight, I'm going with the Cavaliers versus Hornets game. And surprisingly enough, I'm going to take the Hornets in this game plus eight at home. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Bear, what the heck are you doing, man? The Hornets are horrible. Yeah, that is correct. But the Cavaliers right now have Jared Allen out, and I suspect they might rest Garland or Mitchell in this game. Now we have to guess in the NBA because everybody's on the injury report now. This is the perfect spot for the Cavaliers to rest some players and still get the win. The Hornets in their last game were very competitive until the end against the Cavaliers, losing that game by six points. They did have Darius Garland in that game. The Cavs did, but will have Allen out again and potentially rested players. So I will grab the eight points here at home. The Hornets are bad, but if you look at the last games played, they're staying in games. They beat the Knicks last Tuesday. They beat the Pistons on last Thursday. Then they went back home, lost the Jazz by eight, and like I said, they lost to the Cavaliers in their last game by six. This team is still fighting. I don't know why, but they're still fighting. Kelly Oubre Jr., Terry Rozier have been very good scorers. P.J. Washington still forced down low. I like them to keep this game close, so I'm going to grab the points at home with the Hornets. Teets? The game that chose me for tonight is going to be the Lakers versus Pelicans. 
<clears throat> the Pelicans should be fa- favored at minus one and a half. Uh, and action has their over under set at 232 and a half. Uh, just quick notes LeBron and Mo Bamba are both out for this game. Uh, Anthony Davis is a game time decision with a foot injury, but he's ruled as probable, so he should play. Uh, on the flip side, Brandon Ingram, he's questionable with an ankle injury. Uh, he's also a game time decision. And the one and only Zion Williamson is out at least two more weeks from what I read. Um, they're hoping he'll be back before the playoffs. It's possible that he won't be, especially since the uh, the Pelicans are not trending towards the playoffs currently. There's not a lot of basketball left, and they are currently sitting at, I think, 10th in the West. Uh, so they're going to need to turn turn it around quite a bit, like pretty quick, get some games won so that they can be competitive. Even the play-in, that's all they need to get Zion back on the floor. And I think that this happened last year, too, with Zion. He was out and t- up until the playoff time. They didn't make it, so he didn't play. Uh, quick head-to-head. Uh, the Lakers, I'm going to focus on the Lakers because I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. I'm taking Lakers plus one and a half, but honestly, I would sprinkle money line. Uh, they, the Lakers are three and five against the spread of a plus one and a half uh, in the last eight games. I do specifically the eight games because if I don't do eight games, I need to go back 15 because the Lakers went on a seven game win streak uh, after the eight game spread that I'm talking about. Uh, in the same uh, time frame for the over and under of the 232 and a half, Three and five for the over. So not a lot of points are really being scored here. It's just kind of hit or miss. In general, though, the, in terms of the last five for each team, the Lakers have honestly looked pretty good. Uh, they do have a loss against the Knicks and the Timberwolves, uh, both by single digits, eight by the Timberwolves and four to the Knicks. And they have played five straight home games, so maybe they've been uh, benefiting the home crowd favorite. But they are three and two in that span. The Pelicans flipped. They're two and three in their last five. Uh, their last three games they've been at home. They're two and one, and on the road zero oh and two. They did beat the Trailblazers by seventeen and the Mavs by seven, but they have lost to OKC by fourteen, the Kings by fifteen, and Warriors by nine. That's not a bad group to lose to, but that's still losses uh, for their card. AD Anthony Davis. As much as I have roasted him, and we've all roasted him all season long, he has done a great job grinding in the absence of LeBron. Uh, double doubles, triple doubles, whatever he has to do, 20 points, 10 boards, seven blocks. I don't even know, but he's doing everything he can to stay on the court, broken nose, whatever, and continue to play because he really is the gem that they need. But D'Angelo Russell has balled out recently. He had a season high, I want to say 33 points, even though they lost in the Knicks, he was going off. Uh, I think that he's going to continue that level of play, at least for the next week or two. Uh, hopefully LeBron can get back healthy. I heard that he's out of a boot now, so he's training towards uh, potentially getting back on the court within like next week or two. Um, and uh, Trey, I might offend you a little bit when I say this, but all the pieces that the Lakers have, it reminds me kind of of the Cavs team that they had with K-Love and Kyrie. And I'll explain how I mean this. Hey, that team won a championship. So they did going. win a championship. I mean, the year before that, they didn't. But the year after, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've, you've got those reserve pieces. you got those just role pieces. Like uh, Austin Reeves, Hayi Uchimara. They all kind of are like the Della Vadova, Tristan Thompson. They have a role, and they play the role really well. Uh, they're all, honestly, all of the Lakers are doing a pretty good job at this point. There's not really a piece that is severely struggling like we saw earlier in the season potentially, but they are, they're doing a decent job to keep themselves competitive. Hopefully LeBron comes back and then they can make a run in the playoffs. Uh, you know what? Give me the Lakers money line. I, if you want to keep the spread of plus one and a half, by all means, take that point, but plus money, even though it's plus 104, so it's not like a lot of plus money, I think the Lakers win this game outright. I think the Pelicans continue to struggle, and I think that we'll have to see Zion next season. All right, guys, that'll do it for our NBA basketball picks and predictions. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. we see you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Just want to let everyone know that while we do give out free picks, plays, and predictions on our YouTube channel, we also have a website for you to check out. On our website, bearsprofitplays.com, You can subscribe to the website absolutely free with an email and gain access to our written articles about upcoming sporting events. If you're really looking to make some cash, we have an option to become a member of our website. If you become a member, you will gain access to our locks of the week, which are written articles that go in-depth as to why we are picking that particular outcome. As of now, our member plays have been red hot, hitting over 60% of our plays. If you don't want to become a member, it's no sweat. We are here to try and make you guys some money. That's our main goal. 
So come on over to bearsprofitplays.com and subscribe for free. Check us out, follow our free picks, and see for yourself that our member plays are a great investment for you. Thanks for watching.